First of all, I want to thank you so very much. It's transformed my life. And uh, I love this vibration. I love this um, this energy of uh, the science of deliberate creation. My first question is about the word desire. I live in I live in California, and I have been hearing from Eastern um, Indian masters that the word desire. Um, I don't know how to explain it. That that there is. Um, I don't mean to, to to judge it, but I sense a judgment of the word desire, and I would love some clarity. If you, the, if your choices were. Desire full of resistance and being torn apart or contentment with no resistance feeling better, we would then understand why you might choose a softening of desire for the sake of alignment of energy. And so if alignment of energy were only possible by releasing desire, then we could understand why some would make that choice. We would never make it, but we could understand why some would. But when you understand that your alignment of energy can be achieved by bridging your belief so that it matches your desire, we think that third choice puts you in a different arena. And we think that those who say a releasing of desire is necessary for an appoint for the purpose of aligning energy have never worked with bridging their beliefs in other words they they do not understand that alignment is possible and they have forgotten temporarily why they came for there are a few misassumptions that are at the basis of that many assume that physical man is here being tried they do not understand that you are here as creators. Hardly anybody understands that contrast is essential for a new idea and that new idea is the reason this arena exists to begin with. And so there are a lot of things that you must understand before you would be willing to endure contrast for the purpose of a new idea. We certainly understand. You see, the, the same Misunderstanding is what makes people believe that they have to control all the conditions before they can be joyful. If you are observing bad things which make you feel bad and you want to feel good and you believe the only way you can feel good is if those bad things go away, then it is obvious why you want to get rid of those bad things. But when you understand that you cannot create in the experience of another, and it's not your job to eliminate experiences. And even if you wanted it to be your job, you could spend a thousand lifetimes and never make any headway at it. Finally, we say, it is oh so much better to go with the flow. And the flow is dramatically and emphatically law of attraction. It says you get what you vibrate, you see. So when you begin to understand that it is all about vibration and that you do have the ability to align. You see, your question is really an important one because it brings up this idea of alignment of energy. And that's the thing that we are most wanting you to understand. It's not your job or anybody's job to decide what's right and wrong out there and sort it all out and then try to get people to conform to it. Your work is much simpler than that. Your work is to align your energies within you. Now, there are many teachers who have understood that for a very long time, that your work is your individual personal alignment. And they have discovered through a lot of trial and error that it is easier to align my energies by releasing my desires, especially if I can convince myself that they are frivolous or wasteful or selfish desires, and align with that old belief of me being humble and meager and not enough, we agree. In other words, if, if we were, if our goal was to get all of you just to align your energies individually, we would say, the faster you all give up your desires, the better. In other words, if somebody calls you on the telephone and says, hello, you don't know me, 
I will never call you again, you'd say, who cares? And many of those religions would say, ah, you are now in alignment, for you do not care. But we promise you, you have come forth to give birth to desires. And your work in aligning your energy is to align with desire. So here's the way it goes. You examine contrast. Through the contrast, a new desire is born. You give your attention to your desire. You practice it until it's familiar. You feel ease as it becomes more familiar. You step into a new place and it manifests. And now you have a whole new platform of contrast. And so you evaluate the contrast, a new desire is born. You give your attention to the desire, you practice it until it becomes familiar, you step into a new place, and it manifests. And now you have a whole new platform of contrast from which to give birth to new desire, you see. So what they are saying is, there is no motion forward. You're standing where you are. Somebody else is making all of the decisions for you, which means there was no real reason for you to come forth if somebody else is making all the decisions anyway. And your work is just to stand here forever and make this spot the comfortable spot that you want to be. So as you examine contrast, don't allow a desire to be born. Because if you should allow a desire to be born, now you won't be in balance anymore. And we say, so what if you're not in balance? You're constantly achieving balance. It is not a difficult thing to achieve balance. Good. You. Good. You. Uh, the other question, um, it's not a question I wanted to share that I have created a, uh, an Abraham group in Los Angeles and it has wonder, worked wonders for us. You know, we meet every Thursday uh, evening and it's wonderful to share our uh, creations of the week and it really helps shift our vibration and it is helping you with your faith or belief in law of attraction as you see person after person deliberately uh, offering thoughts and then you watch the universe responding exactly before long you will acknowledge that law of attraction abounds and everything that you see will make perfect sense to you and i have another question is i want a confirmation that all is well with my children and my family <laughs> Are you asking us to uh, probe into their probable future and uh, <laughs> and uh, assess everything that could possibly be and then report back to you that you have nothing to worry about? Or are you asking us to acknowledge that uh, law of attraction takes care of all things and that the dominant basis of their vibration is in a very good place and that well-being abounds and that if you see a little ripple that you could, through the power of your focus, influence it. Uh, often when somebody asks that question, what they really want is for Abraham... You see, we talked about what faith is. Faith is belief in what is not yet seen. And we say, well, what faith really is, is an understanding in law of attraction and an understanding that you can offer a vibration, and in this case, influence a vibration that would be positive and the way you were wanting it to be with your children. But what happens very often as our physical friends are looking around is they cannot see the evidence of well-being. They really want to. And so then they want someone who can see the future to give them a promise of well-being, which is almost as good as observing well-being. And we say... But that isn't quite yet what we're teaching. In other words, what you're saying is, I'm mostly an observer, and when I observe good things, I feel good. So give me a probable thing to observe, and then I'll feel better. And we say, we're happy to reassure you, but we really want you, we want you to find your, your sense of well-being. Oh, have you, have you ever noticed that your earth continues to spin in its orbit? It's not, it, it wasn't on one of your lists of things to do today. Make sure that the earth spins in its orbit. In other words, we don't see you worrying about these things that we, we never see you right. Make sure that gravity continues to respond in the way we are used to. In other words, you, you accept so much of your well-being, you just take it for granted. And what we would like you to do is begin to accept this enormous well-being that exists. And in order to do that, sometimes you have to take a broader view. 
Sometimes you have to step back and look at the whole of things to understand that there is no death, that there's only eternal life, that you continue to come forth to have new experiences. Sometimes it takes taking a broader view before you finally accept that all really is not just a little bit well, but dramatically well. And as you begin to look for those kinds of things, what happens is you begin to vibrate more of that and then more of it manifests in your own life. But if you're like most people and you're sticking your nose all over the place, it's easy to observe pockets in this environment where well-being is not abounding. And we want you here to understand what that means. The stream of well-being showers down like a constant rain shower on all of you. In other words, well-being is flowing to you at all times. But when there is someone who is sick, all that means is somehow they have managed to create a sort of shade that is keeping the shower of well-being from reaching them. And so their sickness is more like a shadow. In other words, it's more like a, a temporary disallowance of that stream. But since most people don't understand that that's all that's happened, they, they look under whatever this blockage is and they see the sickness or the confusion or the, the horrible whatever it is. And then they assume since that exists, there must be a source of it out here somewhere. There must be something bad out there that has created that. And we say all that's happened is that this person has disallowed the stream of well-being that would be there otherwise. And so as you begin to notice things like that, as you watch, as you begin to consciously look for the correlation between what's manifesting and what the attitude or mood or vibration of the person is behind it, before long, it's very clear to you why things are happening the way they do. And then those things that are happening no longer frighten you because you understand why they are there. Now, when it's someone like your children, in other words, it is rather reassuring to begin to get a grip on deliberate creation. With very little practice, you can begin to feel rather invincible. I can flow my vibration any way I want. And if I flow it in a way that nets me something I don't want, no big deal. All that's going to happen is a stronger desire is going to come forth and greater clarity is going to help me to focus more upon what I do want. But then you think, but what about my children? What about people I love who don't know what I know? What, what if they're negatively creating and I have to stand by and watch that? And we say, well, you considered all of that before you came into this physical body. You said, there's no risk here. Because the worst thing that would happen is someone would disallow the stream of well-being for a while. And when they do, first they'll feel negative emotion. In other words, they'll always have evidence that they are doing it. And so what we notice is that as you stand as a teacher, knowing what you now know about law of attraction, and you begin to practice scenarios about the people you love, and those scenarios that you practice in your mind become more familiar to you than what they're actually living. What begins to happen is, especially when they are around you, they begin to feel greater clarity. They begin to feel greater strength. Some of them even begin to verbalize by asking you what you know. As you begin to live what you are learning and knowing, all around you good things are happening so that those people who are accustomed to interacting with you cannot help but notice that things are usually turning up pretty good for you and often they begin to say, what do you know that I don't know? If we were standing in your physical shoes, we would not run around trying to make this some metaphysical magic. We would not talk about some non-physical guru who is giving you the seeds or the keys to deliberate creation. We would just say, hey, I'm happy. And the happier I am, the more good things come. And I found out that I can focus in my mind and make myself feel good. And the better I feel, the better my life gets. And if they say, but that's not realistic, say, I don't care. It's working for me. In other words, don't try to teach some some big magical thing that's going to make them resist because the more fanciful you tell them you, that you are, the more they want to drag you into reality, you see. And what you're wanting to do is just be blissfully successful in your deliberate creation and know that the contrast of their experience will produce 
an environment for them to eventually achieve the same.